All right. We'll wait just a few moments for everyone to jump on. Hope you all are having an awesome day. Homeschooling, working from home, all that good stuff that comes along with everything we're doing now. Hope you're hanging in there. It's been a little challenging for a lot of people and, um, you know, hope you're doing well. Hope you're healthy. Hope you're still, you know, happy, excited, and optimistic about the great opportunities that lie ahead of us. Um, just another moment here as we're getting a few more people coming in and we'll get rolling. Pull up my chat box here. All right, so it's great to have all of you here for this workshop that's intended for Utah landlords uh, to help you navigate and operate through COVID-19, this pandemic that we've got going on and all the rapidly changing policies, acts, orders, and the craziness that's surrounding us. It's crazy just how frequently and often and, and rapidly things are progressing and, excuse me, and changing. And I think that for that reason, we wanted to bring us all together and uh, help navigate folks through this. Of course, this is what we do here at Key Renter full time. And a lot of you, I know, most likely have full-time jobs, careers, or retired, do other things. And this is not necessarily your full-time gig, which is why we want to be a resource for you during this time. So just a couple um, housekeeping items before we dive in. For the sake of everyone's sanity, <laughs> seeing that there are a couple hundred people joining us, everyone's mics will be muted. Uh, but that doesn't mean I don't want participation. I do. I want participation. I'll be asking some questions throughout. We'll be polling a little bit. And if you have a question, feel free to ask uh, using the chat feature. And uh, we'll do our best to address as many questions as possible at the end. Uh, of course, time permitting. We have a lot of content to cover. Um, you know, if we don't get to your questions today, please feel free to reach out to us after the workshop and um, we're happy to address them as well. I'll provide contact info at the end. And lastly, if you're unable to attend the entire webinar and you need to jump off early, that's okay. We understand. That's why we're recording this and it will be made available to you here in the next day or so. So you can watch it at your leisure or if there's something you wanna go back and watch again, you're welcome to do that. So with, this, with today's workshop, I wanna give you an overview of what you can expect over the next hour or so. Um, if it goes over a little bit, bear with us. If you have to jump off, that's okay. But I don't wanna rush through some of these topics. I wanna to make sure we cover it. And, um, but again, it'll be recorded. But before I talk about really what we're gonna be addressing. I wanna first share what this workshop will not cover. And the first item here is, we will not discuss how to wash your hands properly. <laughs> we're not gonna talk about the six foot rule, distancing or staying at home. 
Although these are actually very good practices when visiting your rental properties. We're not gonna talk about how to order food at your favorite places, how to stay entertained during all of this. You've got plenty of that. If you're like me, you've gotten probably a thousand emails by now as, as well as an email from every service that you've ever done business with or not done business with, just somehow they got your email and you're getting COVID-19 emails bombarding your email. So we're not gonna go into all those things that a lot of us already know. Um, we're also not going to talk about and go into doing an in-depth analysis of the rental housing market. I'd love to be able to do that today, and I will on future workshops, but we can't just because of time and constraints that we have. Also because of time, we won't cover all the best practices and innovative solutions for adaptive operations, such as showings, routine inspections, maintenance, move-ins, move-outs, and other processes that are impacted or potentially impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we will provide those resources to you though. And lastly, this is not a long presentation, only to give you nothing tangible at the end. This is not a sales pitch, but it's a workshop intended to put any self-managing landlord in a position of action immediately following our time together. So we're gonna give you real tools and talk about some real tangible stuff here today. And that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna, we're gonna discuss a lot of the hot topics and give you real practical and again, tactical ideas, processes and solutions for solving really the most critical areas of your rental business, primarily with rent collection and non-payment is that's the big topic uh, that's going around even on the media now. Uh, and those things have been impacted. And so we'll talk about those. We'll give you some ways to be more prepared, review the government acts and orders, as well as how to operate and respond underneath those acts and orders. And for those attending, we have a gift for you at the end. Um, and so this gift will save you a ton of time and a ton of grief. So stay on as long as you can. And again, we'll have this recorded for you, for you guys that have to jump off early. So just to quickly introduce myself, um, I, my name is Nate Tu. I'm the co-founder of Key Renter Property Management. I'm the president of uh, Key Renter Salt Lake, the Salt Lake office. I'm also the COO and co-founder of the franchise as we franchised our company about six years ago and we now have offices across the country. I've served for two years on the Utah Department, uh, excuse me, the Utah chapter of NARPM, which is the National Association of Residential Property Managers and uh, been involved on a national level there as well. And I currently serve and have been serving for a few years on the board of the Government Affairs Committee uh, for the Utah Apartment Association. And so it's through my association with folks who are a part of that committee that I'm staying up to date with a lot of things that are happening. Again, changes on a daily basis here. So, now it's your turn to participate. And so this is where I wanna get you guys to jump in the chat. If you look down at your navigation bar at the bottom of the Zoom uh, webinar, you'll see a chat option. So I wanna have you guys, looks like Chantel Markel already let us know. She's from sunny St. George. We got Craig from Orem. Please jump in and let us know where you're joining us from. We'll just let this kind of come in. We've got Thane from Orem. Matthew from St. George, we've got Park City, South Jordan. St. George again, oh man, I wish I was enjoying some of that warmer weather down there. We got Austin, Texas, awesome. Terry, Terry's good friend, good to see you on the, on the call as well. All right, we got West Valley, Salt Lake City, Murray. All right, we got Colin, he's on our Salt Lake team. Thanks for joining us. We got just about everyone from our Salt Lake team who's joining the call as well. Okay, all right, the next thing, thank you guys for participating there. We're gonna jump into the next question. Let us know how many rental properties you own. One of you already did that. Thank you, Gabrielle, for letting us know. We'll just let that kind of flow through for just a minute here. Very cool, this is awesome. We got a diversified group here. Anywhere from one, 
looks I've seen 60 units, you know, in between there, you've got a good myriad of property owners owning different uh, portfolios. And so that's really cool. So the last question here, are you at home today? Are you at the office or some other place? Let us know where you're calling from. I'm assuming we're going to see a ton of home because we've got some stay at home orders and strong recommendations and guidelines. But if you're the office like me and I'm the only one here at the office, that's okay too. So, okay. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. So disclosure alert. Um, I'm not an attorney. Okay. So everything I say is really going to be my opinion and interpretation based on weeks of research, working with attorneys, government and, and industry leaders. And uh, this workshop is really a snapshot in time. And so things are changing rapidly, like I said. So what I say today, I'm hoping will carry us through for the next couple of weeks at least. Um, but who knows? We don't have a, I don't have a crystal ball. And then also the, the policies and best practices will continue to evolve as time passes and goes on. And we'll do our best to keep you guys informed. Um, all right, I wanna talk first about the impact that COVID-19, the pandemic is having. Um, and I do wanna start with first having a little poll. And this again is a part where you guys can participate here. And the questions I wanna ask you guys are first, have your rentals already been impacted in any way by the COVID-19 pandemic? And then secondly, are you expecting your rental to be impacted in some way by the pandemic? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to launch the poll. It's going to pop up on your guys' screen. And it's going to show in real time, it'll tally up everybody's uh, responses here. So you can see um, where everybody's kind of sitting right now in terms of their impact that they're having currently. And it looks like on the first question, the majority, well, actually, it's actually swinging the other way. Now it's back to 53%. The majority is expecting some sort of impact with their rentals. Okay. Some are unsure at this point, which is okay. There's a lot of uncertainty about things that are happening. In the chat, I just saw Lisa comment that her tenant was, was furloughed. They're expecting some late rent. And so, yeah, there's, there's definitely some impact, okay? I'm just going to let this go for another 10 seconds or so. If you haven't had a chance, put in your vote. Okay, so we got 46% that have been impacted and 67% are expecting. And that's, that's kind of what I would think as well. Right now, it's a little early to see the impact because it's still just the first week of April and a lot of the impact we're going to see coming over the next couple of months, um, especially towards the end of April into May and possibly into June. Okay, thanks guys. So we'll come back to do some polling here. Um, shortly. All right, so what is the impact? Well, as you guys know, Everything's kind of frozen. I stole this slide from a good friend of mine who did a presentation a little while back. Thanks, Brad. And, uh, you know, everything's kind of frozen. We're, we're kind of stuck in this limbo land. We're, we're stuck at home. You know, we've got the stay at home orders. People are a little unsure what to do. Um, there's the frozen element of it, but then we also have the impact on rentals, which is primarily, um, you know, operations that involve in person communication with tenants or adjusting. Tenants are losing work. Again, we already mentioned from Lisa's comment. Um, and then landlords, because of that, are not receiving the rent. And a lot of them are in April, but more will have more challenges in May and June. So that's one of the primary purposes of this workshop is to give you the tools to prepare for that. But one thing I want to comment on is that it's still a little early in the process of everything that's happening. And the farther we get up this mountain, the clearer we're going to be able to see into the horizon and be able to make decisions based on actual information as more things come down the pipeline, 
as tenants start receiving their stimulus money and we start seeing more. And so the key here is that we're, we're staying ahead of the curve. We're staying ahead of things, being educated, but we're also not panicking, right? We got to stay calm and recognize that we don't have all the information in front of us and there's still things that will be developed over time. And as we know more, as we know more, we can see more into the future to help us prepare. But on the topic of preparation, let's, let's talk just briefly about how rental owners can be prepared. Okay, so there's a few things that I wanna bring up here. The first one is as, as much as possible, having a three month rental reserve, what I call a peace of mind account, is important. It's something that we, we um, talk about with our clients that we manage properties for. Not all of them can do it. And I would imagine not everybody on this call can do that right now. But if we have that as a goal and we start preparing and doing what we can to have a financial reserve, it makes it so when it starts to rain that we've got that umbrella to keep us dry and we can weather the storm, so to speak. The next one is um, have patience and understanding during this time with residents and also with the government, okay? This is, this is unprecedented. This is unchartered territory. There's a lot of really smart people that are doing the best that they can. Are they perfect? Are they gonna make perfect decisions? No, but we just need to recognize that there is the world that we want and then there's the world that we actually live in. And oftentimes, most of the time, those are not the same thing and not even close. And so let's have some patience throughout this process and let's be prepared to adapt and adjust. Those that are prepared and willing to adjust and adapt are going to be those that can weather the storm, so to speak, okay? And then use the other tools and strategies that I'll recommend for you guys. Um, we'll go through today. If absolutely needed, here are some tactical things you can take away. There is an SBA loan that's available for rental owners. Um, it's part of the disaster um, SBA program. There's a link for it on our website that I'll show you here towards the end that you can go to and learn more about it, or you can Google that. But they are making it available to rental owners and that is because rental owners are actually business owners. You own a business when you own a rental and they're making that available. There's also the CARES Act for mortgage holders, but use caution with this because the lenders, of course, if they're avoiding foreclosure, they're, they're not allowing to have foreclosures for the properties that qualify and that are included in this. And I'll share which ones those are. And those that are forbearing mortgages for 180 days, not which is essentially not requiring that you pay for that period of time, it doesn't mean that it's being waived. You gotta pay it and oftentimes they'll have a balloon at the end of it. And if you don't, if you're not able to make that balloon, they can start the foreclosure process at that, that time. Of course, pending any other future acts or you know policies that are put into place to restrict that. Okay, another poll here, you guys. So this is our, I wanna just bring up procedures and I wanna get your ideas or your thoughts and your response on uh, first, have you or are you planning on updating some of your procedures such as rent collection, showings, leasing, inspections, maintenance because of everything happening? And then secondly, have you already communicated with your tenants to give them updated procedures due to COVID-19. And I'm gonna go ahead and launch that now and let's give this about 25, 30 seconds here. And some of those, some of those procedures are simply, you know, we've got tenants that may be higher at risk or anyone who's not comfortable with handymen coming into their house or you know you doing a, a, a routine inspection and so you gotta just be a little bit more sensitive to that and able to adapt okay so we've got about 16 or 41 percent saying yes 
that they're planning on updating and we've got 36% who've already communicated, 49 that have not. And that's okay, you guys. That's what we're gonna be talking about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this. So as I mentioned before, I'm not gonna dive really deep into updating your processes. We just don't have time to go into all of that. That could be another session. But I do want to, to stress how important it is that you are proactively communicating your updated policies and processes for those sort of things, rent collections, showings, all of that sort of stuff. But I will share with you guys a sample. Um, I'm not going to bore you with reading all of this, um, but hurry and, hurry and jot it down. Get your notepad and write it down word for word because it's going to be going away in just a second. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to make all this available to you guys. We have the actual forms and everything linked on our site that we'll share with you guys after this call. Um, but this is just a sample of what you could use to communicate some of the updated changes. So now let's talk about the government acts and orders. This is really the, the, the meat and potatoes here for today. And I want to start first with Utah orders. All right. And the first one there, and I'm just going to focus on Salt Lake County. There's other counties and other areas that have similar stay at home or shelter in place. Uh, type orders. I believe the first one was Summit County, if I'm not mistaken. But here we have a stay at home order from Salt Lake County Mayor. And here is the impact that this is having. Of course, I mean, we understand that this order, with this order, there's a, a bunch of businesses that are forced to close. And it really is very sad. And it's going to be very difficult for them. And if, if any of you are involved in a business affected by this, our, our hearts and prayers are go out with you or go out to you. I mean, it's, it's really hard for a lot of people. You guys um, know what's going on. Uh, but for rental owners, uh, the good thing is, is our rental businesses are viewed as essential businesses and services. And I want to bring this up because I've been asked this question quite a few times from people, uh, some of our offices and, and other folks locally that are wondering you know, how are we supposed to continue on and move forward? But again, this is our business where we're providing shelter, we're providing housing is seen as essential. And so real estate in clarification with the county, they have confirmed that that includes rentals, property management. We've got to be able to provide shelter, okay? So the next one is Governor Herbert, uh, his executive orders that came out yesterday. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me get some water real quick. Now, there was an email that we sent out <clears throat> with some incorrect information, and it part it was partly intentional to stir up some response, and it worked. <laughs> and some of you uh, wrote me back and said, "Hey, this is wrong," and that's cr that's true. But what I was trying to prove was a point that I'll get to in here just a minute. Um, but I first wanna give a little bit of background on this. So the executive orders, and I'll share what it is, but there's been a lot of tenant advocacy groups who have been calling for rent abatement and forgiveness, okay? So imagine this, you have your rental property and the government says, hey tenants, you don't have to pay rent and it's forgiven for 30 days or 60 days, whatever that is. For a lot of landlords and rental owners, that would cripple them. That would be really difficult if they don't have that reserve fund in place and they wouldn't be able to um, pay their mortgages or other things. Um, it, it is something that would have happened without intervention. And it could have been much worse, again, with abatement or some sort of forgiveness. So the UAA, which is the Apartment Association in Narpam, Utah, our chapter, and various landlord attorneys uh, we work together with Government Herbert to come up with a better alternative. And it's not perfect, but it's a huge win. We really, truly, sincerely see this as a huge win over abatement and forgiveness. And so the unfortunate thing is this is how it was, it was pitched by the media. Essentially, it said that you and your tenants have, you know, this is what, the question what we're saying here. You guys may have heard or your tenants may have heard from the media Tenants don't have to pay rent until May 15th. And landlords can't do anything about it until May 15th. And 
it wasn't spun exactly that harshly, but a lot of tenants have interpreted it to be that. And it's not the case, you guys. And we're going to go through exactly what it is. This is not the order. Um, but again, the media did what they do best. This is the actual order, word for word, from the order, the document, the signed document I have available on our website for you guys to review as well um, that I'll share with you at the end. So I'm not going to read every moment of this, but this is talking about uh, Title 78B, which talks about unlawful detainer and tenants and, and everything that is involved in evictions, everything like that. So this is essentially saying that tenants that are described in this section 78B who are current on their rent payments as of March 31st, 2020. So if you have a tenant that was in default already, this does not apply. And it has to be a tenant who qualifies. So they've actually suffered a loss of wages or job loss as a result of COVID-19. We'll talk about how you can qualify them in here just a little bit. They've also been subject to a mandatory quarant or excuse me, or they've been subject to a mandatory quarantine order by the Utah Health Department or local health department, um, or have tested positive for COVID-19. So the, the important thing there is, I think I got my ors wrong there, because it's they have to have suffered income loss. That's the critical piece there. Because obviously if they didn't, then they are in no worse of a position. And that it has to be caused because of the situation that we're in. The other part of it is he says that he further orders the Department of Workforce Services to offer free mediation assistance to landlords and tenants. So if there is a dispute caused by this, there's free mediation in place. And it does not include, and this is the part that a lot of uh, the media was leaving out, that it does not prohibit evictions for any reason other than evictions for non-payment of rent by tenants who have been directly affected by COVID-19. So if you have a tenant that um, is violating the lease or there's illegal activity, you do not have to wait. Granted, the court system might be delayed because of everything happening, but you do not have to wait. And it does not create or require um, rent or imply in any way rent forgiveness. Again, so that is a critical piece that was put into this order. This is not rent forgiveness. So if a tenant needs some kind of deferment in place, they do have to pay it back, okay? And this order goes until May 15th of this year, okay? Um, here's a good thing, another silver lining to this or a bright, a bright spot. The Utah Housing Coalition, which oftentimes is a real, I mean, they are an advocate for tenants for the most part. They are calling for tenants to pay their rent. Um, and so rather than having the other perspective on this, they are really calling and encouraging tenants to pay rent and, and um, putting that out there and making that public, okay? This is as of March 31st, just a couple of days ago. All right, so I know that there's some questions coming in um, and there will be about that, uh, those two orders, but let's move on and then we'll jump into more of the tactical things of how we're going to proceed forward as landlords and how we can, how we recommend it. Um, the CARES Act is the next one. So this is on a national level, an eviction moratorium and other items. And again, there's some misunderstanding on this as well, of course. And this is what it really means, that as of March 27th through December 31st, there are certain elements of the CARES Act, not everything. Some of it is 60 days, and I'll share those with you. But this is for covered properties. And a covered property means that the loan associated with it is a part of the HUD program, rural housing, or it's backed by, by Freddie or Fannie, which, as you know, up until three to five years ago, that was the majority of conventional loans. And so if you have a conventional loan that is three to five years old or older, it's most likely a Freddie or Fannie. And so you would be a part of this, meaning you need to abide by this act. 
but how can you know if it's a Fannie or Freddie? A lot of people have asked me this because it doesn't say necessarily on your mortgage statement. Um, you could have a mortgage that's held by um, Wells Fargo and you think, well, mine's a Wells Fargo loan and so it's not a Fannie or Freddie, but that's not the case, okay? So these are two websites. You can jot these down, do a screenshot, take a picture that you can go to to actually look up if it's owned or backed by Fannie or Freddie, okay? I'll give you just a second there to jot that down. And if it is, what this means for you is that from March 27th through July 25th, you cannot serve a pay or vacate notice, okay? Again, that is for um, those loans, those properties. So if you have a, a property that's paid for in cash, you don't have a loan on it, it does not apply. Um, you cannot file an eviction action that is based on non-payment of rent, fees, or other charges, essentially any amount owned, owed. You cannot charge any late fees or any other penalties related to the resident's non-payment of rent, including concession chargebacks, which is if you give a half month's rent for someone to move in and incentivize them, but then they default and you charge it back. You cannot serve a non-renewal notice for end of term or month to month, and that's a big one, you guys. So if you have a tenant's lease that's expiring, you can't give a legal notice for that. Now, here's the, here's the caveat, okay? You may have tenants' leases that are expiring. How many of you guys, and you don't need to put in the comments, this is a rhetorical question, <laughs> but how many of you guys actually go and post a legal notice that you're giving them notice to vacate if you've had a really good working relationship with these guys? A lot of landlords do not do that. Um, you need to do that if, you, if they do not move out and you have to evict them. But you can still have a good relationship with your tenants and they can move out amicably without having to do an eviction, which in my experience is 99% of the move outs where you're simply terminating the lease and giving a notice to vacate. Sometimes there are pe people are frustrated or upset about it, but you just use your interpersonal communication skills and work through that challenge. Okay, here's the other thing. So from December, or excuse me, from July 26th through December 31st, you cannot serve a 15-day notice. And Utah is a 15-day notice. It has to expire the last day of the month. But you can give a tenant a notice on the 15th or the 14th. And if it's in a month-to-month -month agreement or tenancy where the lease is expired, it's month-to-month. -month. But we can't do that anymore until the end of the year. So you have to give them 30 days notice, which you know I'd encourage you to do anyway give people a little bit more time to find a place. All right, so here's another poll. We're gonna kind of move on and talk about rent payments. This is a big topic. Um, and again, just a reminder, this is, this is being recorded. It will be um, shared with all of you guys in the next day or so. But I'm gonna do another poll here. And the questions I wanna ask are about rent payments. And let me find it here. The first question, have you had tenants let you know they're impacted financially because of COVID-19 and will have difficulty paying rent? And then the second one is, have you or are you planning on modifying your current procedure for handling non-payment of rent due to COVID-19? I'm gonna go ahead and launch that now. And let's have you guys uh, jump in there and tally it up. All right, so far we've got about 50, 50 uh, it's changing rapidly. So 57% are having difficulty 64% have modified their procedure for handling non-payment. 30% um, are unsure about modifying their procedure. 9% are unknown in terms of their tenant's ability to pay rent. And that's 
to a certain extent expected. Um, it is the second of the month. And so some tenants who are having a challenge um, may, not, uh, may not have notified. And I apologize, you guys. It looks like some are having a difficult time participating in the poll. I apologize for that as I'm reading some of the comments here. Um, so if you didn't get the poll, it wasn't intentional. <laughs> Looks like quite a few did, um, but if you didn't, sorry about that. Okay, so it, it ended at 55% yes on the first question, 59% is yes on the second question. Okay, that's good insight. Thank you for, for participating there. So we're gonna talk about this. I'll give you some tactical things that we recommend for you guys. So what should landlords do? I mean, we've got these acts, we've got these orders, we've got to act a little bit differently, we've got to operate differently. What should we do? The first thing is we need to proactively communicate with our residents and be on top of it, be ahead of it as much as we possibly can. And a lot of you guys, especially if you're, if you're owning and self-managing one or two or a handful of properties, a lot of you know your tenants on a really, um, you know, friendly basis and you might just send a text or they, they're texting you and letting you know. And the key is that you are checking in with them, okay? So here's just a quick sample email. And again, we'll make this available for you or you can take a picture of it if you want. Um, just checking in, you know, hey, hey, John, I wanted to reach out to you, uh, reach out to you, reach out to check in with you to see how these are going for you with everything going on. I'm here to help and support. We've been asked by several tenants what to expect with rent in April. Please realize that rent is expected to be paid. You may have seen some recent media coverage. And so it's, it's setting that expectation, but it's being kind and understanding. It's not, it's not an email or a text or a call that's just, hey, where's my money? Where's the money? Are you, are you gonna be able to pay? Are you gonna be able to pay? I mean, let's, let's be human about this and the good type of human <laughs> about this when we're talking with our tenants, okay? But check in with them today if you haven't already and just make sure that they're doing okay, all right? You can even ask them about, hey, do you guys have enough toilet paper? And if you're feeling really generous and you got, you know, you're one of those that went to Costco and loaded up on 50 huge things of toilet paper, <laughs> go take your tenants one. It, it can go a long way for a lot of people and, uh, you know, give them what they might need, okay? Um, all right, if they're expressing difficulty in paying rent, again, let's show compassion, empathy, keep it positive, but set clear and appropriate expectations. And here's how we've gone ahead and done that with our <clears throat> few hundred tenants that we have. Um, and it, so if they, if they email or they call um, we'll respond with this to their email or we'll on the phone tell them, hey, let me send you an email that just outlines the process and how we're going to be handling this for you. And again, the very first paragraph, if you guys are reading that, is intended to show empathy, show compassion, and show optimism as well. And really helping the tenant realize that you're a good person and you're there for them to help support them throughout this. If your tenant has experienced some real hardship because of this, yes, I know it might be hard on you because you're not getting your rent, but we got to think about it through their lens and see things through their eyes and, and do our best to come up with a good solution for them. Because a lot of these tenants, you guys, as you know, and some of you have some good relationships with them, or I would imagine most or all of you do, and um, they're good people. And it just, it just kind of sucks what they're going through right now. And it's so important that we re realize that. The next portion after just showing that initial empathy is discussing rent. And we just kindly let them know, although it is still due, and unless the government says otherwise, our residents will still have the obligation to pay. And then in this specific email, I'm bringing up the um, email that was sent out um, or excuse me, the, the uh, orders that were put in place by Governor Herbert yesterday. And I even link in there 
a link to the actual order so that the tenant can read that rather than going to Fox News or going somewhere else to try to be educated as much as you know as they can. And then, you know, um, reiterating some options for them. We'll go into the options, letting them know that there's going to be a stimulus and really just kind of setting the stage and that expectation. The next thing that we do is we give them things that they should know, that they should understand. First off, you can set your policy. Now, for us as a company, we, and you can set your own policy here and modify this, but we have decided as a company to waive late fees this month. Um, we just think it's the right thing to do. And we're not, we're not doing it for some, we're doing it for all. We're just doing that for these guys, for everybody, just because we don't know what they're going through. And we will not be posting notices, uh, non-payment notices, until we have worked out a solution with you. That's what the expectation. So we normally post our notices on the seventh of the month. We have a five-day grace period. We wait on the sixth, usually late fees tally up. And on the seventh, we post a non-pay, um, three-day pay or vacate. And we don't want the tenants to think, oh my goodness, like I'm in this situation, I'm gonna get that notice on the door. Because we can't, <laughs> we can't do that. We, there's a moratorium right now on eviction notices. So we can't do that under this uh, situation. There is an exception I'll talk about, but um, so we're setting that expectation and putting them at ease, okay? The next one are some things that they should do. They need to respond to the email. They need to explain their situation, what they're able to do for April's rent. And if they can't pay right away, when will they be able to? We've had a number of tenants that have said, hey, I can't pay by the first, but I can pay in full on the 15th. Great, thank you for letting us know. We, you know we're, we're concerned about you guys, wanna make sure you're okay. Thank you for letting us know that will be just fine, okay? And you can work out that solution with them. If they need a longer period of time, you'll wanna get an agreement in place and I'll show you that agreement here. Um, again, getting insight into the situation, the next point here is you want to try to do what you can to get money in their hands so that they can pay rent. So here are some real specific things that they can do. First, of course, seek financial help from family um, and loved ones. And a lot of residents right now are doing that. They're going to mom and dad. They're going to their brother, you know, who's better off. They're, they're seeking help. Some of them don't want to do that. They might have a little bit of shame and they're feeling really down and beaten down and it's embarrassing for some people. I think right now it's not as much as if someone is furloughed or, or let go in normal circumstances just because it's so common. And so more people are gonna be willing to go to family because of what's going on. And then seeking assistance from charitable organizations. That link is a link to a resource that we have available. You guys can utilize that too with tons of local, charities and places where they can get assistance for rent as well as for food and other things that they might need. And then seeking financial assistance from your church or place of worship, uh, make withdrawals, retire from um, retirement funds. The government is considering, and this is one area I'm not as up to date on, but I know a few days ago they're considering um, offering non-taxable withdrawals on retirement accounts. It may have passed, I just am not as in tune on that. And so that can help a lot of people. And then they may wanna consider a short-term bridge loan or utilizing a credit card or something to be able to make things work if they can see that they'll have some income, of course, with the stimulus money coming in. Um, <laughs> thanks, Sandra. Uh, there's no option six. That was an oversight on me, on my part. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, that would be option six, but it, right now it's option seven. So we didn't like the number six in this presentation very much. And so we wanted to keep that out. Uh, uh, so the next one is what I like to do and what we're planning to do lastly, okay? And this is what the order that was put in place by Governor Herbert is all about. It's for a deferral. And with the deferral agreement, this can be set up for those who qualify. And there is a qualification process and I've got the application linked in here. So if they need the deferral, they can fill out the application. And then lastly, again, just wrapping up with something kind and, and uh, 
asking for their response, okay? So let's dive into the ref deferral process, okay? Um, you wanna have a policy in place. You wanna have criteria and application, and I'll show you these, and then have the deferral agreement. And the first one is the policy. Here's just a suggested policy. This is actually drafted by um, our attorney who works a lot with the UAA and has drafted a lot of this stuff for uh, you know the Utah Apartment Association. These are some suggested uh, policies that you can have in place, okay? And we'll make this available for you, as well as uh, rent deferment criterion application. And so this is where we're asking them, have you done this? Have you gone to family first? Have you gone to some charitable organizations? Please explain, let us know your situation. Let us know what's going on here. Let's see if, you know, there's even a link in there. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's a GoFundMe rent uh, support page that's set up. There's a link to it in here. Uh, I think they've raised close to $200,000. They're issuing $200 per resident that applies for it. Um, that, you know, if they have availability and they, they qualify. So we're just asking them these sort of questions so that we can get an understanding of their situation and make sure that they do in fact qualify based on the criteria that Governor Herbert set in place as well as um, uh, with the CARE Act or CARES Act, I should say. Um, the next one is the, the deferral agreement. And there's two pages of this. I'm just showing the first page, but this is where whatever arrangement you're working out with them, if that's going to the end of April, 1st to May, uh, May 15th, which, you know, we may be required to do, right, um, if they qualify. This is where you set that repayment plan, and you can set that up on the next page to discuss a balloon payment. You can do monthly installments. You might want to set it up so, hey, you're going to pay half month's rent in April, as soon as you can, maybe that's on the 10th. And then the rest of the half months, we're gonna split up into three months and we're just gonna increase that monthly payment um, over three months. Okay, so what if I don't hear from my tenant and they haven't paid, can I do anything? And yes, you can. And this is where I was getting to with not being able to post notices and there's an exception. This is, a non-payment notice, a notice of delinquent rent that our attorney drafted for this specific situation. So that if you, if you have a tenant that you're just not hearing from, you can, and they don't pay their rent, you issue this notice, post it on the door, the front door, it needs to be in a conspicuous place. And there is a paragraph there you can see towards the middle, bottom middle, it says, if your delay in payment is a result of any effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, you should have already contacted management to demonstrate the need and to make the necessary arrangement. Um, it's in default, but again, this is like, okay, you guys, you're in default. We need you to contact us if you are a part of this. If you're not a part of this, we may proceed um, with this uh, eviction. Now, you're gonna wanna check with your landlord attorney. Um, because the state may not allow the eviction to actually go through. But again, this is a way to turn up the heat, maybe, <laughs> with your residents and make sure that they're communicating with you, okay? And they'll know that it's a little bit more serious at this point, okay? And just a reminder, um, these documents will be made available for you guys. Um, all right. Uh, let's see here. So to conclude, I want to talk about two different ways that we can view all of this. When we look back at this time, are we going to refer to this as the time of COVID-19 or Opportunity 2020? And you've probably seen some of the memes going around about uh, the opportunities that are available to everybody. And it really is true. This is truly an opportunity to adapt, to grow, to learn, to be compassionate. Um, I was on a webinar just in the last couple of days when, uh, where Jeff Hoffman, who's the founder of Priceline and such a great 
great business leader, great example of doing the right thing. Um, he said, you will be defined by how you help your tenants and customers during this time. And this is a property management webinar. So he was, he was talking to us. Step up, make a difference, and they won't forget it. Now, Jeff wasn't saying waive their rent, forgive their rent, but be, be kind, be compassionate, work with them, create solutions for them. Okay, the next one uh, is, is a phrase that I've seen recently as well. The dollars are in the change. I really, really like that. It's, it truly is the time to evolve, to be better prepared for thriving in the future. And what this means is essentially the dollars, the money can be made in the changing, the adapt, adapt, adapting to our environment, adapting to our situation. You know, you look at the grocery stores that um, implemented um, store pickup and online orders and you pull up and they bring out your groceries. Those stores are doing well, maybe not as well, but they're doing well. But you look at those that did not implement that, oh my goodness, they're hurting. You know, you look at the other businesses that have implemented solutions that are allowing people to do business with them from home. And those are the ones that are doing really well right now. And finally here, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Warren Buffett, as you know, um, I, I wish he would take greedy out. I don't necessarily mean greedy in this situation, but seizing the opportunities is a good way that I like to think of it. Now is a great time to continue building a rental portfolio. You know, we're working with clients and investors in actually group funding. So multiple owners were group funding with paying with cash single family homes which provides an alternative investment strategy that increases cash flow and drastically reduces risk and liability. And we're looking for more properties right now. Um, we're also looking for more investors, people who want to invest 20 to $50,000 or so. Um, if you're interested in looking at that, reach out and we'll give you some additional information. Um, it's, a, it's, an, it's a great way to build your portfolio and build wealth. All right, so I want to talk about this gift that we're giving. So if you go to keyrentersaltlake.com forward slash COVID-19 dash dash landlord dash resources, as it shows on your screen, I don't know why I had to say all those dashes, but I did. Uh, you can see it there. Um, there's a page set up for you guys to have all of the material that we have available for you. And you can check that out and um, see what we have. Um, I'm going to bring into screen real quick. Um, let's see here. Just because I want to show you. So we've got the CARES Act. We're going to have the recording to this webinar there. The executive orders, email templates, rent deferral sample policies. You know, we've got all this stuff available for you guys to check out to utilize, to edit, to modify, to make your own. Um, we're just giving it to you guys and we wanna make sure that um, we're saying thank you for being a part of this, as well as we just wanna be a, a, a source of support for you. Um, all right, so if you're sitting there with a specific situation and you wanna run it by us or you want some additional insight, feel free to reach out to us. This is how you can contact us. We've got three offices available in the Valley to serve you. you can schedule calls going by going directly to our websites. Um, if you know folks who are looking to, so to speak, replace themselves as the landlords, maybe they're getting tired of it, they don't wanna deal with it. Our property, property management teams are here to take that burden away. Um, but ultimately, if you have questions, if you wanna want help implementing some of these things that I talked about today, send us an email and reach out and we'd be happy to help out. If your property is in, again, uh, as you can see, Salt Lake, you can see the area that we cover there. Our Provo office is in Utah County. And then our elite office is Tooele, Davis, Weber counties. And uh, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear how things are progressing for you. We're gonna plan on doing more webinars like this and uh, workshops at, at least monthly but we may do some if there's another significant um, 
piece of legislation or an act or an order that's put into place. And we just want to get everybody together to kind of talk about this. Okay. So now we have a few questions here and I want to dive into some questions if we have any. Um, let me scan the chat log here and some questions. Um, how can the governor just pronounce what he is literally changing the rental contracts that are in force and thus impact our own ability to pay the mortgage to our landlord's bank? Is he going to order the banks to waive late fees too? So that is a really great question, you guys. So under the CARES Act, it, there is mortgage relief as well as relief for tenants. Now with this specific order for uh, that our governor put into place through May 15th, um, you know, that, that is a little bit more challenging. And so we have to work with that and again, be patient with this and do everything we can to keep things moving forward. There is some assistance. Again, there's some SBA options. Um, there's stimulus money. There's other things that are gonna be coming down the pike. But again, it is gonna be hard. This is one of those situations where it's unprecedented. We have no, no real clear experience to draw off of to, to have our government leaders navigate us through this and they're doing the best they can. It's gonna to be tough. And you can imagine as a property management company, our business is, our revenue is derived off of tenants' ability to pay rent, if you really think about it. And so we charge a percentage of rent. That's how we get money. So if rent doesn't come in, that's hard for our business as well. And so that's why we're so adamant about putting things in place so that we can work with tenants and do everything we can to help them especially the ones that we, of course, we want to work with, we want to have and retain long-term. We could talk about renewal strategies on another call. There's some great things that we put into place for renewing leases in times like these. Um, question, uh, how can we validate, and Ryland, as you're putting the questions in here, tell me who, who uh, that's from. Um, I want to thank them. Um, how can we validate our tenant has indeed suffered a loss of wages? Okay, so on the application, there's a section where they need to put in an explanation, but there's also a place where it says, hey, you need to provide an upload or attach to the email or send it however you want to have them send it verification. So that could be um, a copy of the furlough notice. It could be uh, income verification. It could be, you know, uh, paychecks or pay stubs. It could be a, a, you know, bank statement. It could be anything like that that's showing, in fact, that they've had a reduction of income that will, that would limit their ability to pay rent. Um, of course, if they were quarantined because they were actually infected, there's doctor's notices. There's other things that you can get but ultimately it's gonna come down to income. And so having some of those things, as if you're screening a tenant, right? In the very beginning, how do you verify their income in the beginning of your rental relationship with them? All right. Um, oh, <laughs> personal question for me. Yes, my dad is Rick too. So uh, shoot me an email. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you how, you, how you guys are connected. Looks like you served together in Germany. I'll give you a call. Thanks for your number. Uh, that's awesome. Appreciate that. Um, okay, guys, we're going to wrap it up here now. Thank you so much for joining today. Again, we'll make, we have these uh, resources available to you. Reach out to our teams if we can do anything to help you out and enjoy the rest of your day. And everybody take care, stay healthy, stay well, and enjoy. Take care.